taxes, keeping my books straight, running a profit and loss statement, it all gets so confusing. I used to spend more time trying to worry about my taxes and if I'm doing them right than I actually did working on my business. I needed a solution. That is when I found Core Financial. Core is a team of tax professionals that actually care about real relationships with their clients. From the moment I hired Core, I was able to trust that I would be fully taken care of. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all the tax breaks I qualify for. Are you struggling to understand your finances? Do you need help making sure you don't make any mistakes? Look no further. Core Financial. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core Financial, and we know you will be too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to see what they can do for you. Core Financial. Real relationships. No surprises. I'm 185.9 centimeters tall. That's what I am. Okay. So yeah, I that am right. so I am 190 centimeters tall. If John is 185, Ooh, it really tall. burns. It really burns him that I'm taller than than he is. Hello and welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn, and today I'm joined by my best good buddy, Mr. Nick Miller. Nick, today's a good episode, but first, how are you? What's new? Dude, I am so good. I am wearing my Kansas City Royals sweatshirt because one, it is cold in my basement, but two, baseball's back. It's starting as of recording this weekend. I'm so excited to be able to watch some baseball. I know John is a huge, massive baseball fan. He is so excited about it. <laughs> totally. Well, probably not. Probably I'm more not, excited about the that, basketball that, coming up, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's a little what's going on in my world. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm keeping trying to keep caught up on everything. Um, but yeah, doing all right. Got a wedding this weekend, so... Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm up to. What about what about you over there? I'm off this weekend. No, I'm. I do have a wedding this weekend. I was thinking that I was off this weekend and had one the next, but I do have one this weekend. Um, so by the time this airs, I will have shot my last wedding for July, of course. But um, doing things are good. Life is good. I'm, uh, you know, all caught up on my edits. Thank you, editor. Uh, I'm getting weddings out, and so everything is good in my world. Um, something exciting that's happening today, Nick, for the first time mm-hmm, ever, mm-hmm. we're having somebody on the podcast from down under, from Australia, our first Australian, from Australia. Australian, I don't know how to, I don't know how to have an accent, I'm terrible yeah, at don't accents. Do that. Don't, I, yeah, don't do that. I'm terrible at accents, I spent a lot of this episode just trying to convert centimeters to feet and pounds to kilograms, I didn't know what I was doing, but... Natalie with the Auburn Hour. We had her on. I've been a big fan of her work, her brand for a while. And she stayed up super late. I think started recording her time at 10 p.m. So she could, you know, we could start at 9 a.m. And we just had a, a good conversation about your brand, about, you know, evolving over time. And we're really mm-hmm. excited for you guys to check it out. So let's jump into this week's episode of the podcast. All right. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, for being on the How to Film Weddings podcast, our first Australian to be on the show. Why don't you say hello, introduce yourself to How to Film Weddings. Woohoo! I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, definitely don't feel cool enough to be on this podcast, but thank you so much for asking me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Natalie and I run the Auburn Hour Films over in little old Perth, Western Australia. Love it. So it's like, you know, as we're recording, it's 9.15 in the morning, our time, and it's 10.15 p.m. after after today for you. So at the end of today for you. So thank you for coming on and being on here super late at night for you. Um, Why don't you explain to everybody kind of your story and how you got into wedding filmmaking? Yeah, um, it was a little bit of a roundabout journey, probably. I did, I studied film and TV at uni um, here in uh, Perth, but it was more based around working as part of crews and that sort of thing, you know, big film sets and whatnot. And then I graduated and I was like, 
oh, like working in um, like the ultimate team uh, student project throughout uni just kind of destroyed my love of group group work. So I was like, I don't think I want to touch another <laughs> camera for a little while um, and just kind of like went off and um, just was working like casual jobs for ages, didn't really think about it. And then um, I just came across a photographer um, at some point and he was like, hey, oh, you do video. Do you want to come like film some behind the scenes stuff for us? And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Why not? And that kind of got me more into fashion and like events and that sort of thing, which was awesome and made me feel really cool um, being behind the scenes. And uh, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. OK, my dreams are now to go to like um, film like Milan Fashion Week and behind the scenes at Chanel. But um, <laughs> I pretty quickly realized that uh, fashion doesn't really pay a lot of money especially in Perth Western Australia um but I was pretty determined um not to do weddings because only sellouts do weddings of course um (laughs) and you know um you know I was just like nah weddings are so boring the the worst thing you could be doing like there's no passion um and I think I was I'd worked a few weddings for somebody else that I knew in the industry at the time just sort of second shooting and at the time, it was all just tripods and sliders and gimbals. And um, I'm about like 160 centimeters. I don't know what that would be in feet, but I'm <laughs> I don't either. quite small. We don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm small um, and trying to carry around all these tripods and, and things all over the place was just not a good time. Um, so I was like, nah, nah, never doing weddings. And then, of, of course, eventually, uh, a friend of mine, I think we were at a fashion show, he was a photographer, and he's like, look, these friends of mine are getting married, they don't have any money, I'm going to do their photos, would you do their video for cheap? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was like, if it'll get me get me some money, then all right, maybe I'll give, give it a go. Um, and at the <clears> time, <throat> I was shooting, um, I just bought the A7S, one uh i think that had just come out and so i hated tripods and i i discovered this thing i thought it was so smart i was like oh if you just slow everything down to 25 percent you actually don't need a tripod because it's totally stable at 25 percent and so there's this entire phase. I think I've private made all the videos that were on Vimeo at this point in my <laughs> career private now. But there was like this whole series of films for about a year where just everything was slow-mo, like extreme yes. slow-mo, every single shot. Um, and so I think I, I was just like, oh, why couldn't I do that for weddings? Like, let's give that a go. Um and I had these grand ideas about how it's just going to be like revolutionizing the wedding industry in Perth, WA. And about three days before the wedding, I freaked out and I just, just I was like, nope, everything on tripods, everything on tripods, <laughs> bring the sliders. Um, Cause I got a bit um, like worried, you know, you start to think, oh my God, these people's memories. What if, mm. what if it doesn't live up to the expectation? Like can't handle it. Just, just go back to what you know, go back to what you know. Um, and anyway, I did that wedding and it was lovely. It was, it was totally fine. Um, uh, and then I think it just kind of snowballed, like, you know, friends of friends, just, you start getting recommended to everybody. Um, and I think I just ended up doing a few different ones of their friends were all getting married and sequenced like every month (laughs) from then on. Um, so I just started doing more and more of them and eventually I worked up the courage to shoot one of those weddings entirely handheld. And I did slow-mo every single frame of that video to 25% as well. Um, But yeah, and then eventually I I think I kind of grew into my own style, which was nice and kind of discovered that weddings actually aren't so bad. Um, The people are lovely, the vibe's awesome. Um, It's the best day of people's lives and um, you know, generally it's um, a good way to make a living as well because since I couldn't seem to get it happening with the fashion mm. industry, unfortunately. Love it. Love it. So yeah. you, when, when, when was it when you did your first wedding? Actually, I should know this because I just showed someone my first wedding film. Um, I think it was five years ago. Okay. So that, what would that have been? 
2015? Yeah, 2015. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So it's been cool to watch. You know, your your branding is definitely awesome. I've been kind of following you from afar um, on Instagram, and I saw you, you know, speaking at the Lonely Hearts camp last year. All these different things, and it was like. You know, your branding is definitely awesome, and I, I want to talk about that. I know you had kind of a journey to get to that, but um, what is basically, I mean, I know COVID and everything's going on, but, like, how many weddings in a year are you trying to shoot? Like, what's your happy place on on that, and what does, mm-hmm. like, a typical wedding package include, the cost, all that kind of stuff? Um. Well, with weddings, like, the number has always been um, – it's actually always just – kind of landed around 25 to 30 generally i don't think i've ever gone over 30 in a year um and that was actually it was just kind of um lucky because when i was working for this other video company when i was starting out um I remember just one time being scarred because <laughs> I I went to this guy's house. He was lovely and great to work for. Um, and I think I just went over to drop off some SD cards um, and and just swap, swap something over or maybe it was batteries or something. And I just rocked up and he was in this like flurry and like he was like all over the place and I could tell he was like really stressed about deadlines and I saw this whiteboard that he had and he had about 33 names written on this whiteboard and he was like these are all the wedding videos I have to get done and never get into weddings like you know the deadlines are insane every everyone wants everything now and I was just like oh my god okay like (laughs) um I could just and I think that experience sort of made me really wary of ever taking on Mm, too much work um so i'm pretty grateful for for that just like random moment that happened um and i've always been just a bit panicked about ever overbooking so i've been pretty good from the start of never going too much over 30 yeah i think 30's always been the max that i'd do in a year um and that just keeps generally for me a really nice work-life balance as well and I try to aim for like two a month and then just in peak months for us, it would be like November and December and sometimes March. Um, I think our seasons are flipped, so mm-hmm. probably wouldn't mm-hmm. be those those months yeah. for you guys. Um, those months I'd book like four or five in the month. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was the other thing you wanted to know about packages? Yeah, just like what is a typical, like what do you deliver um, to your couples? Mm, um. Well, I've got a series of different packages and it's all based around the the short film that I offer in each package. So my smallest package is just a three to four minute music video. Uh, my middle package, which most people end up booking, is a four to five minute, I call it a short story, and it's just got the, um, you know, like bits of vows and speeches over the top. And then I've got a longer version of that, which is a six to eight minute um, video with the, the speeches and the vows over the top as well. Um, nice. And I do um, raw edits with everything, um, mm-hmm. which is, I do like, it's kind of my first round of like picking shots out of the, the timeline and going like, yep, yeah, these are all the like good bits from the day, throw it all together, throw a color grade on it and then export um, and blend the audio <laughs> just to make it like a little bit watchable. Um which came about just from doing a friend's wedding and then kind of realizing that while as a videographer, I probably don't value the raw sort of edit in it in and of itself. Um, I think as a, if I was the bride and groom, I think I would value that just, just for the, the ability to watch back and just see your oh, friends sure. um, in all these shots that like I would have just overlooked going like, oh, no, it's the same as this other shot, but it looked prettier over here. But it only had two of their friends, whereas like all the other shots had the rest of them. Um, I've been kind of trying <clears throat> to phase out ceremony edits for a long time and I've been pretty successful at it um, this past year, which I was happy about. So I don't actually offer ceremony edits with anything anymore unless people specifically add it on and I don't usually encourage that because I don't <laughs> like doing them. Um, but speeches edits will come with, um, all the, all the, the two packages that have the, the speeches overlaid and I do vows with them as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for sharing all that. I like, um, you know, how, uh, you know, as we're, you know, going to get into branding and kind of that sort of thing. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of things where you have this idea of maybe what you want to do and what you want to deliver. And then you get into doing it and you're like, Oh, ceremony. Um, I know I don't like doing that, so I don't want to offer it or, you know, like just, just how everything kind of flows together. Um, yeah, we're all, we're all in that. And that's just, one of those things that just kind of takes time for us to figure out, you know, do I want to do this or not do this or, or whatever? Hey, John, I had a question. Did you Google what her height would be in America? I did. I did. It's <laughs> what is on it? My screen. So you said you're 160 centimeters. Is that how you measure yourself in Australia? Yeah, I think it might be like um, 161 if you want to be exact. But yeah. Oh, OK, that's, well, that's you are five feet, five point five feet, two inches is what you are. So you're you're not tall. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm not yeah. so. That's I'm try- accurate. I need, I need to put it into those calculators. <laughs> that, that, that's about what I'm, my wife is. I'm 185.9 um, centimeters tall. Is what I am. Okay, so yeah, I that am. Sounds about so I am 190 centimeters tall. If John is 185, Ooh, it nice really tall. burns. It really burns him that I'm taller than than he is. Because it really, it's yeah. You're you're actually probably closer to yeah 188. So just oh, uh, uh, or 192. <laughs> math. Um, sure, math, whatever. Anyway, so I, I was sitting here. Now I figured this out. But a uni, when you said uni, you meant university, right? Like school, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. You know, I, do you guys have that or is it college or? We call it college. I mean, yeah. We call it yeah. college. You know, we do call it you know university, but we don't you know call it the uni. Or, you know, that's that's a you yeah. know that's a uniform. Sh- you know, like yeah. basketball jersey is a uni. Yeah, a uni is definitely yeah not. It's like anyway. university. Yeah, got it. Nailed so it. so my thought, my question <clears throat> that I had was was how are Australian weddings different than American weddings? But I don't oh. know if you. But I don't know if you really can answer that because oh, no, you're Australian. I, I, I can. I can because. Okay. I've done one American wedding. Okay. Um, in so she me- knows it was it for all. a US couple in Mexico. And then also, just based on watching American videos, I can tell that there's like certain differences. How, how funny is that? You're an yeah. Australian filmmaker going to Mexico to film an American <laughs> wedding. Okay, yeah. anyways. I, I'm as shocked as you are. I couldn't believe they wanted me. I was like, really? <laughs> me? <laughs> like, are you sure? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that was awesome. That was like maybe three years ago now. That was a fantastic experience. But um, actually at that wedding, so um, I took my friend, uh, Sean, who um, was shooting with me sort of as my like regular second shooter um, a lot of the time. And this was maybe only two years into doing weddings. And um, this couple out of nowhere just were like, hey, we're having this wedding in um, in Mexico. Like, do you want to come and shoot our wedding? And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. Like, you know, this Perth couple is going to Mexico and they want me to come. And then I realized they were an American couple. And I was like, oh, no, they don't realize I'm in Perth. Like, I probably haven't, like, put it on my Instagram anywhere and um, whatnot. So I, like, replied and I was like, yeah, but travel from Perth, da, 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 expecting them to say, oh, whoops, no worries. But then they replied and like, yeah, let's have, let's line up a Skype meeting. You know, we want to chat this, that and the other. Awesome. And yeah. And we ended up going over and I took Sean with me because I was like, look, Sean, like I, uh, I don't, I don't want to go alone. <laughs> like, Come with me, please. So he brought his wife and we all just um, went and had a great time in Mexico. Um, anyway, so the speeches um, were happening at this wedding and, you know, we're getting ready, you know, in Australia here, speeches are like so long there's just they're they're an epic part of the night and so we're bracing ourselves we're like setting in settling in and like getting ready for the long haul and then it's all over in about 15 to 20 minutes and me and sean just look at each other like oh my god that was so quick like how great was that and then we turned to the the planner and we were like whoa how great were those speeches and like so quick and she looked at me like I was insane. And she was like, are you kidding? That went forever. And we were like, oh, like, don't come to Australia. Um, because our, like, it, it can be short, but generally um, there's five speeches and they all go for at least like 10 to 15 minutes each. 
Oh my um, goodness. <laughs> I had two grooms in my last season speak for 40 minutes each alone. Like that was that was kind of extreme, but I couldn't believe it. Like the groom got up and we're like, okay, wrap it up, buddy, wrap it up. And then, yeah, 40 minutes later and you're like, oh. wow. <laughs> the vibe's gone. Nobody wants to dance. They're all just wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, so that's like a big one. 15 to 20 minutes here would be pretty long. I mm-hmm. mean, most speeches are a few minutes and then they're done. Maybe dad will get up there and then the planner's like, hey, wrap it up. But like after, after like four or five minutes. So that's it. And so you're like at least usually what, 45 minutes or so of speeches? I mean, I've had ones that have gone only for like, yeah, 20 minutes um, total, but they're so rare. They're just like little <sighs> unicorns that exist, you know, one in 30. Um, but usually I'd say around 30 to 40 minutes um, mm. is like on average how long in total the, the speeches would go for. They That's can go it. anywhere from there up to an hour and a half, though. Depends oh Depends on the wedding. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's no fun for me anyway. Yeah. Maybe it's fun for you, but. <clears throat> yeah, it's I mean, it can be. I, I guess we're just used to it, though. Um, yeah. So we're just we're braced. We're braced. And then another thing is we don't really do first looks in Australia. Mm. Um, I mean, occasionally we'll do them, but it's more so if the couple just wants to get their photos done before the ceremony. So they'll mm-hmm. just end up doing a first look. And I see, I'm so jealous of you guys because I watch your videos and there's always these just like grand emotional first <laughs> looks like the guy turns around he's already crying he sees her <laughs> he cries more there's like this beautiful embrace they have a moment in Australia guys don't really I mean it's kind of a generalization but men the guys just don't seem to want to show as much emotion. Like they're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's happening. I hate this. I hate every moment of this. I hate the camera being on me. And then they like turn around and they're like, oh yeah, you look great. <laughs> and we're like, come on, give us Give something. us anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, mo- yeah, some guys um, turn it on a bit, but it's not really that like crazy, emotional, mm-hmm. beautiful moment that I see um, in the American films. And I'm like, <laughs> One day, <laughs> one day, some groups could just burst out crying, um, and it'd be That's glorious. Hilarious. That so, is hilarious. Yeah. so what I'm hearing is basically it seems that Australian weddings and American weddings are very similar, except you have very few first looks and your speeches are just way longer. Yep. Okay. Okay. So does there that you make yep. you like? So are you like? Oh man, I really wish I could do more American weddings. Like, and then my other question has to come across uh, about the accent. When you hear an American accent, do you think, "Oh my goodness, I love that accent. I wish I could have an American accent." Or do you like? Because that's exactly what I think when every time I hear an Australian accent, I'm like, "Oh, just read me anything. Tell me anything." So is it the same, but the opposite? How does that hit you? I love the American accent, but also we're so used to it. We're so used yeah. to hearing it from um, all the TV shows and everything. Honestly, when I um, I hear an Australian TV show, um, the accent sounds so strong to me. I'm like, oh, my God, do we sound like that? <laughs> Is that what the Americans hear when, they, when we speak? Um, but, yeah, but I, I don't know. I just I love American accents. Um, I think they're so cool. <laughs> We're, um, we're cool to somebody. But I love Nick. I love Australian weddings. I have to say, I think we have the best weddings in the world. Yeah, Sorry, guys. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so you heard it here. Natalie said that American accents are the best accents, and <sighs> Australian Ooh. weddings are really cool. Did um, I say that? Y- yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I am pretty sure that that's what you said. And uh, we can talk a little bit more about cool accents, but more about branding and the stuff that you probably really want to hear about right after this break. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? <laughs> yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday. But you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow, and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. 
head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash weditor to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And we are back from break with Natalie from the Auburn Hour, our Australian friend, our first Australian that we've ever had on the podcast. So exciting. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our question of the day. Question of the day presented by Weditor. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And Natalie, we want to get into, you know, uh, branding and kind of style and like that kind of stuff. So uh, I want I want to ask you um what what does what does style mean to you and what does your brand mean to you like like what 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 are things that you're thinking about whenever you think about your style and your brand and in your business Mm. well i've always hated both of those words only because it always went like way over my head whenever anyone did like a talk about brand and then trying to like explain what exactly brand is to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, I just don't get it. Cause they're like, Oh, it's not just, you know, the Apple logo. It's like the experience you get walking into the store. And I'm like, I don't get it. Um, but I mean, I think I understand it a bit more now having gone through so many iterations um, of the Auburn hour um, but I guess at the like at the moment, what I kind of go for is, I guess like an authentic but kind of elevated experience for my clients. Where um, like my films themselves, I think I use like my like three words are like modern, natural, and romantic, which I think kind of um, holds true pretty much to what I'm going for. Like now is just trying to capture those beautiful moments and let them play out and let them just be beautiful moments without having to like throw in all these crazy edits and stuff um, and just have things be a little bit more timeless um, and and make things maybe more with a client in mind than with a videographer in mind. Um, and then that extends, you know, sort of to the ex- the whole experience with them. I have a really strong a belief that you know even with packaging and stuff as well that should be a really cohesive really special experience for clients especially if you know they're paying um you know uh, premium prices uh, which like my clients do i feel like even though i could just deliver them a vimeo link and be done with it um i send them out like a really like a custom usb the fancy little box like fancy little envelope and all the little things and like a little gift as well and i think that's just really something that's important for me that i give to the client especially because video is not really a tangible thing like photos it's harder to kind of feel what you're getting if you mm-hmm. don't have some kind of tangible thing at the end of it. Um, and I just trying to carry that through like the whole experience is just making sure that clients feel um, valued and they, they feel the value of what, you know, we're providing for them as well. Yeah. I, I like what you said about your, your packaging is even like a special experience for them or like um, I, I think one thing that I've noticed, especially with like the way that you've branded you, it's like it seems over the last year or so there's been like it, it's evolving. It's it seems like it's always kind of changing and getting, you know, better and more you. And I think that, you know, the words branding or style or like um, but if someone's out there listening and they're kind of in this position where they're like trying to find themselves um, kind of how has your style evolved what advice would you have somebody for somebody that is trying to find themselves and their feel and their and their look and all that stuff yeah well i i mean i guess to put in context i started out i guess five years ago um with the dream to be a destination wedding videographer while simultaneously doing rock and roll backyard wedding leather jacket wearing brides uh, weddings <laughs> and yes. uh, I was very interested in lens flares and um, super 8 little um, film uh, like effects uh, which it could not be more different to what I do now mm-hmm. and I guess 
it's really hard when you're starting out because you just have no idea what you actually like making. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, a huge learning curve came when I realized what I enjoyed watching from other people and what I was consuming going, this is incredible. This is incredible wedding filmmaking. Wasn't necessarily what I enjoyed making as a wedding filmmaker. Um, And that was just like a massive turning point where my brand just got so much stronger. Um, I could feel there was like a shift. Clients were coming to me so much more um, wanting me, not just wanting a videographer. Um, They wanted one of my films. And that was just because I was, I think I was just discovering that authenticity and kind of what I was really enjoying making. Um, And it was just so much more of myself rather than me trying to emulate somebody else or um, emulate, you know, or like, you know, sort of imitate somebody else's style because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Um, For example, I think when I first started out, I, I'd actually, in Perth, everything was really traditional still. Perth's actually the most isolated city in the world. I don't know if you guys know that, Um, but we're literally like the furthest city from any other city. Uh, So we kind of just tend to be a bit insular in that way and and things don't come to us quickly we still don't have a starbucks guys um, and <laughs> melbourne has a starbucks we don't have a starbucks <laughs> but um yeah so everything when i started doing weddings it was just yeah gimbals sliders tripods and everything so that's my idea of what wedding filmmaking was and then Somehow I must have just seen some stuff from literally just over east in Melbourne. I think the first one I ever saw was Light Noise Films. They're um, two girls, Bree and Brooke, who did these really cool handheld. They did these, you know, little Super 8 um, effects and the lens flares and stuff. They did it way better than what I ever did. Um, And they had this awesome color grade and it was fun and it was fresh and it was these really quirky, modern, stylish couples. And I was like, what the, like, um, you know, and you just go like, that's insane. I want to make that like, and because I had only two things really to understand what wedding films were, which was this traditional idea and then this other video that I'd seen from these um, girls. Obviously, the, what I did next was I took a wedding and I tried to imitate the video that I'd just mm-hmm. seen from them um, to no avail. It was not very good. But I mean, the couple loved it, obviously. Um, and it was my first ever like real wedding film. But um, yeah, I over the course of a whole year, it was kind of a exercise in trying to find what else was out there and then I also came across humdrum films who are incredible as well that's Jared and Jacob over in Melbourne as well those guys do phenomenal work and I came across that and I was like this is insane they're like fun funky really polished like really fast really funny they literally, I, I, I think they must get their music from like the funk section of music <laughs> bed or something. It's like stuff you'd never expect to work in a wedding film, but it just does. They're so, mm-hmm. they're like crazy wizards. Um, I don't know how they do it. But yeah, and so then it became like, okay, well, I'm going to make those kind of films. So I tried really hard to just imitate what I was seeing because that's kind of part of how I learn as well is through, um, you know, like imitation. And they just got to a point where I, I finished this film and it was just so much work and I was really happy with how it looked and I had three different music tracks and it went for like eight minutes and it was fast and like it really had that, that vibe that I was trying to go for. And I just was like, wow, I really hated doing that whole thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hated finding that much music to go in one mm-hmm. wedding film. I hated like throwing in like 17 different sections of, um, you know, story to go together, even though it was epic in the end. Um, it just was so much work. And it's not really how I wanted to keep going. Um, and so that I think was that little turning point for me where I was like, actually, just cause I love watching these films by these guys doesn't actually mean that I have to make those kinds of films. Um, 
And I understand why people imitate because obviously that's what I did, you know, when I started out. But it um, it just doesn't really get you anywhere. It doesn't get you noticed because you just end up being a budget version of somebody else being amazing. And also it's really hard to imagine something that doesn't already exist, you know, like everyone just says create your own style make something unique but you're like how do I you know it's like trying to think of a color that doesn't exist yet you're kind of like what does that look like (laughs) um and that's that's sort of what it felt like for a while but I think those sorts of things just come through um trying different things and also trying to trying to take things that you like steal ideas from people don't steal like an entire like style take little parts that you like from different people's styles and then try to mesh them into like your own kind of frankenstein creation that you can make pretty in the end with your branding um and that's sort of what i tried to do more of was just kind of like okay well why don't i like that like why don't i like making those kinds of things what would make me happier and I was like, what would make me happier? Okay, way less editing would make me happier. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, how do I do that? And I was like, well, you know, try to let things play out. Um, I actually remember watching a, uh, it was an online workshop Story and Heart were doing with 31 films. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember the names of the guys who, who run that, but um, they were super cool. And yeah, I remember dope. watching that. <laughs> Yes, Aaron, Aaron Thorpe. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. And I remember watching that. I've watched that so many times. If that's still available, I'd totally recommend down like buying that. I think it was like $199 or something. Like that was so good for me. But there was this bit where it might have been Aaron said, "Yeah, in the edit like we we don't like being um letting the music define when we change shots. You know, we don't cut to a beat. We let moments just play out and and the moment happens and it ends when it ends I remember watching that and just going like boring (laughs) like (laughs) what because at that time everything I did was cut to the beat like every single shot was cut to every single beat of the music um and looking back now it's just I thought I was just a genius at the time and then looking back I'm like oh my god that's so erratic and like <laughs> I'm just like I don't even know what's happening how did any clients enjoy this <laughs> like, um and you know I was throwing like dance footage in amongst <laughs> prep footage because I was like you know what to hell with it like I'll just throw stuff wherever and we'll see what happens and I'm not going to shoot details because details are boring and um, this, that, and the other. And luckily, like no one ever complained about it. Um, that was one yeah. thing as well that I think going in, I was always really clear with clients and managed their expectations really well. I was like, this is what I do. This is what I don't do. <laughs> um, and so luckily, like I never had any issues um, in that regard, but it's it's almost the total opposite now where I'm like, no, I kind of want things to be a bit more chronological. I kind of want things to make sense. I want beautiful moments to have a chance to breathe and um you know I like details I think they're really pretty (laughs) and I like pretty pretty shots even if it's not like this incredible incredible moment like it's it's fine to just have a shot of some gorgeous shoes and some beautiful rings people pay money Mm -hmm. for those and uh you know they're just as important as good like beautiful moments between people as well in the day and I guess I still don't I wouldn't necessarily put like a detail shot in place of a beautiful moment if I didn't have the time, but um, I definitely think it's worthwhile to include those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, Um, definitely. And I also found it kind of interesting as I've always, not through any um, like foresight, but I've actually always just kind of stayed ahead of the, the trends that happened within Perth. Um, I don't know if you guys have had, if you have the same kind of like waves of, of style changing over in America. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. And I've followed some of those trends too. You know, you try to jump on and it's like, Oh, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do that. And like, it always turns out like, you're like, "Ah," you always kind of come back to, you know, who you are hopefully. And like maybe steal some things, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of trends. Yeah. Um, and I guess we had that here. And, and so that was like, when I started out, I said it, um, it was very traditional. Everyone's websites were really clean, white. 
Um, the terminology was all like we, our, our business, like our company, you know, the, the sense of like, we've got a big team and kind of, kind of almost like a bit corporate, you know, um, mm-hmm. it felt, it felt a little bit stale to me. So when I was like doing my anti-wedding film, wedding films, I was like, no, I'm going to be like personality. This is me, candid, fly on the wall, like totally natural. You'll leave being best friends with me. Like (laughs) just like so all over the place. Um, And that was good. But that again, looking back, that wasn't really what I wanted per se. Like I don't really, um, not in a bad way, but I don't really want to be like best friends with my clients like I want them to also for them like I want them to feel like you know we have a really great um you know friendly approachable relationship but they don't necessarily need to worry about my feelings you know (laughs) because I'm like a best friend to them um so in just in some ways having like healthy client boundaries and also like with the style evolution as well that kind of took off so everyone started doing these like candid, natural, um, um, God, what was the word? Everyone kept using candid and handcrafted was a word that just went around everyone's websites. And um, I think just before that kind of really hit its peak, I was like, mm, actually, I think I kind of just want to go a little bit more modern and that's kind of more what my branding is today which is this sort of um a bit more clean a bit more sleek but it has like pops of um my my pink brand color and just trying to be a little bit more pulled back just like I'm still here I'm totally approachable it's me um and actually I think I tried to say we for a little while I made everything a oh you know we love to do this like our this and tried to take myself out of the business and make it a bit more of like a so it felt bigger I guess than it was and then now I'm sort of trying to bring that back to a actually it's okay to just let people know it's just a person Mm -hmm. behind like one person Mm -hmm. just sitting behind a computer doing everything that doesn't change the quality of your films you know what I make is what I make whether it is just me or whether there's like a team of five of us um, sitting in an office um And then also it cleared up a bit of confusion. I feel like a lot of people just thought there was like a lot of people. Um, And I was like, no, no, it's just me. (laughs) It's just me here. Yeah. Um, And yeah, so there's just kind of like a few waves. And because I've always stayed ahead of it, and it was really just luck. And I think just getting tired of doing the same thing after a couple of years, um, I've I've been able to sort of stay relevant, I guess, um, or just like... I found the value in being unique, you know, and not keeping with what everybody else was doing. Um, and it was just through luck, but it really showed me that if you are unique and you just do something that's different, you'll find your people. Um, yeah. And you won't have to like fight with everybody else in your community for the couples because your couple's going to find you. Um, <clears throat> you know, and the couples that want your work aren't going to want what they do. Definitely. So yeah. that was pretty valuable. And I think that's honestly been why my business has done so well is just because I've always tried to I've always just been a little bit different to what um everyone else is doing and I mean it's a natural thing I guess in any environment for eventually same as what I did when I started you know people see your films and then they just try to try to emulate it or they really like it so of course they you know they're like oh you know okay I want to make stuff like that as well um and that's just about sort of innovating but also just you know, if you're staying true to yourself in your style and your um, version of, of filmmaking, no one's really ever going to compare to you. Right. So, you know, I, I try less and less. I, I don't really watch any wedding films anymore. I used to watch wedding films all the time. Um, but inevitably, you kind of almost, um, you know, block your own creativity by doing that because it's really hard to think of new things if all you're doing is watching other people's wedding films. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you always kind of have that imposter syndrome as well because you're just comparing your own work to everybody else's. Um, and I've got like a friend, Dwayne, uh, in Perth, and he just does like 
the best wedding films. He's so good. Um, he actually, he rocks this style that I used to try to do. And um, I had to mute him on Instagram because I just couldn't stand <laughs> seeing all of his beautiful wedding films come up because every time they did, I was just like, oh, I'm a fraud. I'll never be as good as him. <laughs> <laughs> um wow. You know, but that's okay. Like we're different, um, we're different people, we're different businesses. And, and as long as we're kind of both doing what we love and like have our styles, you know, um, we're both going to be totally fine and get plenty of business. Yeah. One, man, I, I really appreciate all of the things that you said there and, and a couple of things that were sticking out to me. One is, you know, how you took this you took a lot of time to really kind of figure out your style and you tried different things and um, you had the self-awareness to know that just because I'm really drawn to these, like watching them, that doesn't mean that I like creating them, you know? And, and I think there's some people that might not like have that self-awareness, you know, to realize that kind of thing. I know in our business before we became Wild Oak Films, I was Nick Miller Films and our kind of second or third iteration of our logo, you know, I thought I wanted to do more higher end ballroom, you know, kind of more fancy weddings. And we had this logo that would, I would have compared it to like a, um, you know, a premium hotel kind of logo, you know, yeah. just with the look and feel of it. And then I started doing that for a bit and I was like, this isn't us. like, I don't, I don't like this. And so, you know, we, we learned that about ourselves. And so we shifted and so we changed and, you know, now we are what we are today. But, you know, there's all these steps and all these building blocks to get there. I, I love what you said about, you know, if I'm just copying someone else, I'm just a budget version of them because you're not you're just ripping them off. You're not doing your own thing. So, so much great stuff. Thank you, Natalie, for sharing all of that stuff. We do have some few more questions that we want to get to talking about, you know, your clients and their experience. And we will get to that after this break. Are you tired of just sending a link to your couples when you are done with their film? Do you want to deliver something they can actually see and feel? We are so excited to tell you about Photo Flash Drive. Photo Flash Drive's playbook video player is a game changer for you and your clients. Live memories in storybook form. Take your delivery experience to the next level with your couples. Photo Flash Drive's storybook is packed with features. A customizable cover, beautiful video quality, easy drag and drop file load, and up to 32 gigabytes in storage. Not only that, you can upload multiple multiple videos to your player so the couple can watch all of their videos in one place. Watch your couple's jaws drop as they open the book and are able to relive the day. The video playbook is a great way to sell additional items to your couple, a great way to offer the full branding experience, and a great way to leave an impression. And do we have a deal for you? Use promo code HTFW30 for 30% off all playbook video players. Just head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash photo flash drive to see all of the details. We know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film. Musicbed has spent years collaborating with artists, bands, and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video. With amazing artists like Chapters, Tony Anderson, and The Light, The Heat, Musicbed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music. Their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. And we are back from break. Natalie, uh, you know, you were talking about, you know, your journey of, you know, figuring out, you know, kind of your style and your branding and how that all evolved. But I think a, a clear a thing that has helped you is you touched on, you know, finding, you know, your ideal client, you know, getting a clear picture of who they were. So what, what was kind of your process or, you know, your thinking as you're, um, you know, you want to find those clients and how did you do it and how did you like really speak to them so that they're like, yes, you know, the Auburn hour is who, who I want to work with. Mm. Um, well, I guess with, with finding the ideal client, I kind of made a correlation between who was actually booking me in the first place. Um, 
and who their other vendors were generally um, and what kind of like circles they ran in. So I guess at first, I mean, I found, I mean, to put it in a nutshell, I found networking was the best way to find clients. Um, just networking with other vendors was the best way for me to find clients because um, video was just always, it's always the last thing people book. Um, I think maybe now I'm at a point where like five years into the business where um, people do t tend to book me like at the same time as a photographer sometimes, which is like great. I'm like, oh my God, really? Um, but I would say still I get at least half of them are like, I booked everything else. You're the last thing we're, we're doing because it kind of is, it feels like the luxury item. But mm -hmm. um, so when I started out initially, I actually don't know where I where I found the balls to do this, but I just emailed all the photographers that I thought did really great work and was like, hi, I'm Natalie and I'm new and I do wedding videos and here's an example of something I do. And if you have a really cool client, like maybe you can recommend me and I can give them like 10% off and I can give you a commission or something. And this is all stuff like, I don't know about you if in, in America it's maybe common, but nobody does that in Australia and they kind of think you're a bit weird if you try to like... <laughs> take a commission or, or you offer commissions and stuff like that. It's, um, it's not really something we do here. Um, and, and I also was just like, yeah. And if, you know, if you just want to chat or, you, you know, if you, if you'd be free for a coffee, I'd love to buy you a coffee. And, um, surprisingly, and I actually sent that to a bunch of stylists as well. Um, but I actually, just for the record, I put in a lot of effort to those emails. There was like a copy paste element, but there was a whole section where I went through and I found their names because it's, you can always find the person's name somewhere on their website. Um, and that goes a long way. Um, I will like, just like, um, delete an email. If it's like, hi, the Auburn hour. I'm like, my name is literally on the about page. Like all you had to do was <laughs> click the about page. Um, and I also just wrote something about, like I went to their website and I would look and be like, oh, something, so, you know, something you said on your about me page or your style page or whatever page really spoke to me. And, you know, it was this line. I think, you know, we're, we're really similar and, and we have sort of similar tasting clients. Um, or I think your clients would really like me as well, this, that, and the other. And I also really love this specific wedding that you did. I love this, 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 and that about it. And it's just to show that you are not just sending a copy paste email because people know they can tell when you're sending a copy paste email um, and they don't really appreciate it because a lot of the people that you might be emailing are like veterans in the industry and they get emailed all day every day and the last thing they want to do is answer another email from like a newbie where like they've put in zero effort and just mm -hmm. copy and pasting it to like 10 <clears throat> people so if you're going to do that i would say that's a great idea um but just try try to be genuine as genuine as you can um, in those interactions and yeah, shockingly, I think everyone except one photographer replied to me and was like, yeah, okay, like you sound lovely, like come in for a coffee, um, you know, I'm free this, this and that time. And so I met up with uh, three stylists and I think it was th two or three photographers um, and they were all so lovely. It was like, I was just like, oh, the wedding industry is like so easy, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> Which uh, I honestly don't know how, how I managed to swing that. But um, yeah, they, they were really nice. We just chatted. I literally just bought them a coffee, went to their office, made a big effort, um, tried to just chat to them. And most people were really like, yeah, no, like, you know, it's really great to know some good videographers or people doing something different. I think at the time I probably wouldn't have said I was good, but I was definitely trying to be different. <laughs> um, and I had a great attitude. I can't, um, you know, say enough for just having a great attitude. Someone's going to recommend you. Like I would recommend a photographer I like personally over a photographer I don't really like, even if that photographer's work was better <laughs> I would recommend the one yep. I prefer working with and you'll find that that happens with all all the vendors really and basically from there those people rec just started recommending me and that's how I fi found those clients initially 
I also did some <coughs> wedding fairs that like connected me, but that was really better for networking with other vendors than it was for finding clients for me anyway. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it just became sort of a snowball from there where um, I've really, I've hardly really ever paid for ads. Like sometimes I'll just pay for an Instagram post to be boosted or a Facebook post. Um, I don't know if those really work or not. I should, I probably should like invest a bit more time into it. Um, but honestly, it's, it's literally been through recommendations. And then of course, like clients recommending me or like their, their sister who's getting married next year, seeing the wedding film and, um, and finding me through that way. So it's all just building relationships. And I think that's especially important for videographers, um, because I like I said, we're, we're pretty much the last thing people book. So if you're yeah. recommended by the florist and then by the celebrant and then by the stylist and then by the photographer, like, of course they're gonna be like, oh, this person's like definitely on everyone's list. Like, this is great. <laughs> I think when, like, I think a lot of people, especially newer people think like they're going, like I've been doing this now, uh, you know, 13 or 14 years. And it's like, I'll, I'll get emails sometimes from people that are newer and you can tell the difference between like, uh, even from another videographer to a videographer, but the, the email will be more like, Hey, I, I saw your Instagram. I would love for you to tell me your pricing or show me how you did it's just like asking immediately for something. And mm -hmm. it's like, ugh, it's off putting. You're like, no, I don't have the time. I don't want to, but if anybody just takes one more step between asking for something and just either compliments my work or notices something different about me that is better than, you know, it's like, wow, I love how you tell these kinds of stories that really stood out to me. I just wanted to reach out to say hi and you're an inspiration. I'll respond to that within like, you know, the day. Be like, thanks so much. That's great. And if they respond back like, man, have you ever, you know, like I'd love to learn from you. I'd love to like just that little buffer and putting in, like you said, that little bit of work where you, yes, you had some copy and paste portion of your email, but you went in, you looked at some of their stuff, you connected with them personally, and you didn't come across as spam. You came across as a person, and then you don't know what doors that will open up. And, and those doors being open have obviously shaped, you know, your business and what you're doing. And then you do more weddings and you get, you know, referrals from different um, vendors that you really like. And then you get to be doing more of those kinds of weddings and you get to, you know, craft your style even more. And that is how all this works. So that was really cool. How, like how you, you did that and how... I think people out there would think that it's that people will be way less receptive, but it, from what I've seen throughout the entire wedding industry, like people are, you know, planners are a little bit harder to, to get connected with, but especially other creatives, photographers, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the, the stylist, the thing, you know, those kinds of like, they're the ones that kind of all work with each other a, a little better. And so, you know, having those relationships with people that you're friendly with, like you're saying, I would much rather refer somebody that is fun to work with and enjoyable and has a good attitude than somebody that they blow me away with their imagery. So all, all really great things. Mm. I, yeah, I mean, I think it's just about understanding that you are asking like they you you're asking for something from someone when you send them an email like that you know you're and and you know you have to be willing to i think at least you know meet them halfway and, and make that effort yeah to to just be like oh you know i've I put in a bit of effort and i know your name <laughs> at the very and, least like know their and name <laughs> what, what's what's the worst that can happen if you do that and you put yourself out there like they don't respond they say no thank you like i mean it's it's not it's not like they're going to you know um, you know, I don't know, curse you or, Lovely. you know, say this no. person's awful or, you know, I mean, it's, it's the worst. And, and, and someone writing that email, it's very, you know, kind of scary and kind of daunting, but you know, if you just put it, you know, they might not have time, they might be busy, you know, that kind of stuff. Then you just say, okay, hopefully in the future we can get, get to work together. But I mean, it's not like this horrible thing, you know, to ask someone of this, you just need to be respond, you know, know that they might say yes, but they also might say no. And you just need to be okay with that. And that's like, I don't think if, if they don't respond, I'd say, you know, be prepared for people not to respond. And that's not anything um, like negative against you. It would just be like, I know for me, sometimes I just don't get to those emails for a long time because I just don't have the time, you know? Um, and that's like a valid reason. And a lot of stylists, a lot of planners are just, 
crazy, crazy, crazy busy. They barely have time to answer their own clients' emails, let alone, you know, someone <coughs> essentially asking them for something um, as well. So I wouldn't really be disheartened by that. If anything, it's just important to even send that email because you never know when someone's going to read that email, not have time to respond to you, but go that person. Okay. This, that, and they do this kind of thing. Okay. Watch five seconds of that. Okay. Got it. And then they have a client come in two months later and say, look, we just can't afford this person, but like, do you have any, anyone else you could recommend in this price bracket? Yada, yada. And they kind of click and they go, there was that person that did email me. What was their name? Blah, blah, blah. blah. And they'll look you up and they'll, they'll message you. There's been plenty Mm -hmm. of times I've had people message me like a few weeks or months later. Um, not necessarily like immediately um message me back yeah yeah and it all works together and it's cool you know when you're you're talking about like this overarching theme of continually getting better and and upgrading your brand and serving your ideal clients and working through this process a lot of our podcasts leading up to this podcast we've just been talking about your client experience and finding who you are as an artist and all of that goes you know works so well with itself. And so like if you're out there listening and you're 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 feeling like you're maybe an imposter or you're you know it's like it's okay to find inspiration and emulate until you can learn, you know, what it is about your style that you want to use. Um, and and as you're growing your brand, you know, evolving is part of what we do. You know, nobody I would say is just like has arrived in the wedding video industry. The people that you know, you look up to, they're all like, "Man, how can I do better or get better or how can I evolve? So, um, you know, that whole conversation for me is always really exciting to see, you know, where you've come from, what, you know, in five years of time, what you're able to accomplish. Um, so yeah, it, it's very cool to see that happening in the community and it being, you know, I, I think back to 07 when I started and, and like this kind of information wasn't out there. It wasn't accessible. You couldn't really jump on and see other people's work or be inspired by workshops. It just mm-hmm. wasn't happening. So it's super cool. You took the time to be on. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. I mean, I think another kind of thing as you were talking, I was kind of like another important thing I learned as well is just kind of a spin on that which is like don't be afraid to sort of you know essentially quit something that you um or like pivot and kind of go actually this this whole thing that Mm -hmm. I've been working towards isn't actually what I think thought I wanted you know um and maybe I'm gonna just like go in a different direction. I think a lot of people put so much stock in, oh, I've already come this far and I've already done all the branding and I've already done this, that and the other. Um, But it's going to serve you so much better to just, you know, cut your losses and say like, actually, nah, like, um, you know, it's not about quitting something because it's hard. It's about quitting something because it sucks and it's it's not something you enjoy. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. moving on to the the thing that does bring you joy, because especially if you want to be doing this for like, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, you know, what's the point if you're yeah. not enjoying it, That's really? really good. That's really good. Um, and oh, actually, Go as well, did, I think, did you ask me for my price range earlier? I just realized, I don't think uh, I... Yes, maybe, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. I did. Yeah, because that was, um, yeah, I was just thinking that because um, of like where you come from and then where you where you get to. And, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess now I charge between four and a half is sort of like my base package up to nine and a half is my top package and that's Australian dollars. Mm -hmm. And then I actually recently just um, did my personal best of um, an $11,000 total package cost, which was kind of crazy. And it's not something I, you know, it's, it's sort of surreal and you're just like, Oh my God, really? What? Um, and I mean, that would probably be like half of for for you of what it is. You said it was um, how much Australian? The most. Uh, the one I just sold. Yeah. Uh, Eleven. That's that is seventy eight hundred US. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's nothing to that's nothing to. That's a that's a good chunk of change. That, that's nice. That's nice there. <laughs> I'd also say that I think. I think as well, um, like five thousand dollars to an Australian couple, like me charging five thousand dollars to an Australian couple would probably be the same as you guys charging five thousand dollars to an American couple, like five, mm-hmm. you, you know, like like the equivalent right. to, um, like within the country would be sort of similar. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but I, I started out charging like my first two weddings were like $600 each um, for the first two. I was too afraid to up my prices. <laughs> so I just kept doing them at 600 for a while. Um, and then eventually I kind of just stuck in like a 3500 to maybe six as my top for, for a little while. And that was mm-hmm. like a really nice little sweet spot. Um, and then I've just kind of slowly yeah. chipped away at like trying to get out, just, you know, just pushing it, just seeing if people will, will book me <laughs> if I yeah. keep going. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been great. And, um, I, you know, I think everyone's always afraid to increase their prices and, um, it can be different depending on what kind of, um, couple you're looking for, but I guess that goes into the ideal client as well. Like I don't mm-hmm. want to do a, heaps of weddings. Um, so, you know, I need to charge a bit more. So who's going to pay for that, you know, and it's mm-hmm. really like doctors and lawyers and people who can afford stylists can usually afford, um, a videographer and, or they mm-hmm. want a videographer as well. And, um, they have the means to, to bring me sure. on board. So it's kind of just about being a little bit switched on with seeing sort of patterns, I guess, with, with what your ideal client would be booking and then trying to get in in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it it evolves too, just like you're saying, I mean, your price, you know, as you do more and more weddings, you know more and more how much you want to shoot more weddings. You don't want to shoot more weddings. You know, if you like shooting 80 weddings a year, you can probably keep your prices lower if you only want to shoot 20. And so it all, it all flows together. That's super cool. And I did, I, I did ask you the price. I don't, I don't, um, it, it, I wasn't like, oh, she didn't tell us the price of what she she did, but I appreciate you. Yeah, there was just the something you said, and I was like, oh, yep. whoops. I, I asked I you like four questions, question. I think. So in one like, question, yeah. I do that sometimes. Nick gets on to me. I get on to Nick. We just do that. This is what we do. We ask like twelve questions in one, and then expect you to remember all of them. <laughs> but um, I, I, our hour here is coming up. Um, I do want people to be able to find you. So where where can people find you? See your work. Follow you on social. Where's the best place to to find you? And, um, probably I'm most active on Instagram. It's just like at Auburn Hour underscore films. Um, that's where I post all my Instagram stories and my cat videos. And <laughs> I'm pretty bad with, I'm not really like an everyday Instagram, like actual posting to my feed. I probably post once every two weeks at like the worst time <laughs> to be posting for, for likes. Um, but my story game is strong. So yeah, you see plenty of. <laughs> Um, me selfies of me drinking iced coffees and yeah, my cat. So it is very strong. Can't I do wait. follow you. <laughs> and yes, it's very, it, that is a good spot to follow her. We'll, we'll obviously <laughs> link your site and your Instagram in the show notes. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know yeah, it's like you, late at night now it's probably midnight and so thanks for taking the time and hanging out with us. I know that our listeners are super pumped to have you on. So Oh, thank you so much. It's been great. Awesome. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. We really appreciate you taking the time. If you're listening out there, we want you to head over to howtofilmweddings.com. There you can purchase our posing guide. We have over 20 poses that John and I use at our weddings. We have video. We have a PDF that you can look at. It's going to be very helpful for you on your wedding days. That's over at howtofilmweddings.com. Again, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, we will see you. See you.